Selectman Storms, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you for that. So the next item we have is public input. Uh, we limit public input to three minutes. Uh, and uh, because of the size of the crowd, I'm going to try and do my best to hold everyone to that three minutes. If you can do it in less than three minutes, very much appreciated. Uh, is there any public input? Ms. Quagaroli. Lori Quagaroli for Norman Avenue. I just want to, I see that we, we're talking about a municipal or an ethics policy. And I know recently we did a credit card policy. And over the past few meetings, I've also asked for a work at home policy. So I'm hoping that at some point that will reach somebody's agenda where we have a policy, policy for those people who are working in the town hall or the town government who work at home. Or well, where they work at home, and what was the other one? Work at home. Oh, oh I thought you mentioned the second card. card. Credit card? Oh, we did oh, that Oh, you one. did we the credit did card. Okay. You're working on ethics, and yet I still have not seen a work at home policy. Gotcha. So you'd like to see that added to an upcoming agenda? At some agenda. point, yeah. Thank you. I'm going to ask him. Uh, any other public input? Mr. Bracken. I walked into the tail meeting of your other meeting and I heard you talking about renovations to the town hall. But I know that after talking to a member of the fire department, I know that you don't have a certificate of occupancy for the other work that you did in the town hall. And I'm talking about the probate court office, I'm talking about all the work that you did in the, the large uh, conference room, the heating, the ventilation, all of that. None of it's ever been inspected. You don't have a certificate of occupancy from the fire department. It's never been checked off. You guys are cutting corners and already you're making plans for doing changes and are there any plans? Now obviously I was told that the town doesn't have to buy a, a building permit to build its own you know, building because you, you circumvent the, the chain there. But obviously there's got to be liability there that you've never obtained an occupancy for this building. And if something happens, you're going to have a problem. The other thing is, is that I know that they're going for a new police department. I've seen preliminary plans where it showed a parking lot way out in the boonies and I think that that's crazy because I worked there for 28 years and during the winter months it's a pain in the neck just to go out to where the cruisers park now to go into your cruiser during the snowstorm where you've got to clean off snow off of your cars in order to respond to a, a call. Those cars belong but in... But no preliminary plans drawn at this point, so just might make your life easier just there, to know that. There was a uh, footprint of what they were showing was a building and where they planned on having a parking area. I'm not talking about actual room layouts, but I'm talking about a building and a parking lot layout. It was, needless to say. My other thing is, is that with all of the police shootings that are going on, I want to know why the town of Windsor Locks doesn't have in-car cameras and body cameras. We had in-car cameras at one time. They were taken out. They were never used. $57,000 of state taxpayers' money put those cameras in. They were never used. Here it is. It's been more than 10 years down the road. Windsor Locks is one of the only towns around that doesn't have cameras, and I want to know what we're afraid of. The thing is, is that those cameras would be a protection for the town for liability purposes. It would protect our officers if they're involved in the shooting. It would protect the town if an officer went rogue and violated policy. The other thing is, is I asked when uh, Selectman uh, Harrington and Storms came right, on board. Thank you. Is there any other public input? <clears throat> Mr. Rule. Russo, excuse me. William Russo, 407 Elmwood Drive Town. Uh, first of all, I'd like to clarify something on this agenda. There is uh, apparently an item for the purchase of 52 Chestnut Street. I think that you have uh, misled the audience here as far as whether or not we can have a discussion of a new senior center and a new senior center complex. Uh, this is under public input. And I would like to uh, suggest that we look at building a brand new 
elderly facility and a brand new elderly complex. These are the people who built this town. They're the ones who deserve a little bit of payback and a little bit of a little bit of uh, appreciation. So I am again going to ask and suggest that the Board of Selectmen take that under consideration. Um, as far as the PD, I know, Chris, that you're a big fan of rehabbing buildings. I see Park Plaza up on Route 75. I see the old uh, Windsor, uh, I think it's Wood Group on Halfway House Road. I see a number of vacant properties that, that we could probably rehab uh, into a new police facility. Plus, I've suggested that maybe we branch out and do uh, substations now uh, to alleviate the overcrowding. I have no idea what the cost is of uh, a new police building, but I think it would be quite significant, and I think that there are ways to go without authorizing money for a new police building. And last but not least, uh, it's been brought to my attention that the town does not offer any transportation services to the elderly to come to these meetings. I would like to suggest to the Board of Selectmen uh, that we arrange to have elderly citizens transported here to the meeting. Obviously, they would have to give a little bit of notice in order to arrange for that transportation, but I'd like them to be able to, to come and observe and participate. And I, I, I said, I, that was my last, but we need, to go to, we need to go to streaming so that we can have greater public participation. Thank you. Is there any other uh, public input? Then the $100,000, Jim Roach has been trying and trying and trying to get something done with the barn at Noden Reed, and I think a lot of people know that that barn is critical to the town keeping the land. At least that's the rumor or the urban legend that's been around that one of the provisos of giving the town that 22 acres was maintaining the barn. So if there's a grant, and I don't even know what it's for, maybe it could be used for the barn to, to help Oh, you're Jim. talking about the Hartford Foundation. Yeah. Well, I don't know what it was for, Chris, okay. so okay. I'm just talking out well, loud that... According to the rules, it's inappropriate for, for us to even comment on it because oh. it ha because, well, because it has to be... They want separation. They want separation the from the town activity. officials and how that grant is used. Correct. But so for some of us, and I go to a lot of the town meetings, as you guys know, I didn't even know that was out there. So I, I'm just kind of throwing that out. Maybe I should go talk to Anne Marie as a suggestion. But anyway, I think we need to look at all the town buildings. Look what happened with the library. The roof at the library. It cost us a fortune. The heating system at the library. So maybe it's time to take a a big look across all the buildings and decide how do we want to utilize them. And I think I can see a lot of benefit, but then I'm thinking about the people who live on Church Street adding a lot more traffic. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. But Well, we do have the, the plan of conservation and development. It's a 10-year long-term plan, or 20-year long-term plan that has to be updated every 10 years. We also, I don't know if you came in after this point of the meeting or not, but for the last three years, well, two years, and this will be our third, we're spending money with, to get the proper engineering to evaluate our buildings long term. We started with roofs, now we did roads, and then this year we're proposing doing the HVAC systems to try and get that long term projection. So, right. we, you know, so is that I think all we're the town buildings? Yes. Okay, and it's the whole building. So before you build more offices or move people, maybe you look at the HVAC needs before you divvy up the and make more offices. Those are the kind of, the, and I think we need experts. I'm not trying to be rude, but. No, it's a good recommendation. I'm just pointing out, we are taking some strides in that right. direction. Okay. But it's more work needs to be okay, done. Okay, but I, I think maybe before we build million dollars, millions and millions of dollar buildings, maybe we need to look at what we have. Is it appropriate? Do we raise it? Do we keep it? Do we modify it? I, I don't, I'm not an expert at all, but. But these days, the cost of, of Rehabilitation or, or, or uh, adaptive reuse of a building often exceeds the cost of building. Right, new. so maybe so you have we to have to well. raise a building. Not always, but often. Yeah, yeah. Like, so maybe we raise yeah. North Street yeah. and, and turn it into what you need for a safety complex. In the meantime, there's room for kids at possibly one or maybe two, two
two other schools. Right. It's just I'm just thinking out loud. I'm not arguing. But you have to or, keep in mind that our population growth is really sp spiking at the lower grade levels. Okay. So well, we have to, you know, not, not the high school is about capacity, right. but the the the, the, gra the grade schools are right. going to be uh, filling up really quick because right. we lead the state in population growth, <coughs> and that's where it's growing at the at, at that age level. So maybe we have to think about repurposing three of the school buildings and moving the students around. Right. I, the board of I, I think, I think the board out. of ed is looking to study that very issue. My understanding. Well, if that's the case, just thinking about this, maybe we don't we don't have room for full pre-K. Outside the scope of this this, this board. Just that, just thank talking you. out loud. Is there any other public input? Yes, Mr. Mulvaney. Hello, hello, thank you, Woodward. Uh, just very quick, the uh, so make a comment about a senior center in general that I don't think I just don't know that uh, a, a two-story building for a senior center. Uh, one of the major reasons I would think, actually, is that in a senior center, you're going to have an elevator and stairs to go to the second floor. And, I mean, probably would never happen, but if there was a fire or some situation where they had to get down quickly and you had some sort of thing going on up there with a number of people, they can only fit so many in an elevator, and seniors don't go downstairs very fast. Or they may go down fast, but not at work. So my understanding as it relates to this particular site, and I, and I could be wrong, and maybe something's happened you know, since the last time I spoke to anyone there, was that the idea was all of the primary functions would be located on one level. It was only because of the opportunity that the topography of the land offered, because of the slope and back, that they felt from a design point of view, you could get sort of a bonus second level down below with a walkout because that's where the slope goes. So the main, everything would be on the main floor, but there'd be some bonus space, if you will, on the lower level where there would be a walkout to the back side because, because of the, that, that particular lot slopes in the back. So if that's not the case, then I would, I'll stand corrected, but that, at least early discussions that I, that I heard with the uh, architect is that everything would be located on one floor. So you're saying basically this is the, the one whole floor and then where it is sloped That's down. Right. That's right. Be just and that might be storage or some, you know, uh, non-public space or, you know, space that's not relied on for the day-to-day -day operations right. of the center. I would like, that would be a, a situation I would think would be better than having functions on both levels. But it's a good point. It's a good point. Any other public input? Seeing none. Comments of the selectmen? Just two quick ones. Um, the travel lodge, uh, you know, everyone's obviously, you know, wanting answers, but I think it's important to get the reports back. And then once we get the reports back, then we can see where things can get done, whether it be, and, and I do plan on going to the uh, police commission meeting in February as well, so I'll, I'll, I'll be there. But I think it's important to find out where, where, where it went wrong, and then we can look to see what possibly can be done to prevent it. But until we... Okay, the music was loud. There was a lot of people parking. We get, but from what I'm hearing tonight, there's a laundry list of items. And then once we get that report, then I think you can see, you know, actions can possibly be taken by particular agencies, possibly, and possibly even by this board. But we got to see what the what's in the. It sounds like I'm in Congress right now. We got to see what's in the report before. So you know, to be continued. But I, I can. Uh, Selectman Kervik, I, I know, is probably on top of it because he doesn't. He doesn't want to have that in, in town. Nobody does, you know. And then, secondly, um, I don't know if it was Kitty or Joanne mentioned a, a, a fact of a, of a listening session. Um, Chris, I, I would like to take on a listening session. I was meant to call Sue this morning and see if a conference room was available. Unfortunately, my schedule got jammed up, but I want to get with her. And, and we did end up talking to Tom Hennick down at FOI. They are permittable um, listening sessions. Um, in fact, all three of us can actually attend it as long as we're not forming an opinion or stating what we would do with a, with, with a particular item that gets brought up. And, and clearly, it would just be a listening session um, for the residents to come out and speak on what they feel. And, and again, that night, no action can be taken, no, no determinations can be made, um, but 
simply said we can we can bring it up at a at a board meeting. So um, I don't know if the two selectmen are interested in attending, but um, so we consider it. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very pleased that we're going to have the Freedom of Information um, Education Director coming in to the town on February 20th at 6 o'clock at the Ella Grasso room. It's uh, one of the things that we wanted to do, or what I wanted to do, is get all our new board. We had a lot of new commissioners, boards and commissions, and, and they may or may not be familiar with the FOI requirements and what you can do and what you shouldn't be doing on email. You shouldn't be conducting business and all of that. Tom Hennick, who is is just an extraordinary guy down at the FOI, is coming in to put on an informational seminar for our boards and commissions. But members of the public are invited to attend, and uh, I think it's a, a really good session. So if you have some time, you want to drop in and learn more about Freedom of Information, stop in. But I want to thank uh, Chris for... Is that at 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock. It'll yep. be on the town channel next. 220, we'll try to get it up there. We'll it it up. But I mean, uh, Chris and Sue Barsani put it all together with Tom Hennick after we made the suggestion. So. It's all good. So I think My only good. comment is just to follow up a little bit on Paul's about enforcement. And uh, just to warn people about how cautious the Board of Selectmen has to be when it comes to enforcement issues. Um, the enforcement of, you know, personnel, they, they have to be making the determination as to what they should and can enforce. <coughs> I'll give you an example. It's no secret that the town <coughs> was making up a uh, efforts to acquire the uh, Windsor Locks Commons property and actually entered into an option to purchase it. There's also no secret that there's many issues that people feel should be enforced down there. But can you imagine if the first selectman or the board of selectmen was telling enforcement officers yes or no to enforce things down there and they're also at the same time negotiating for the purchase of that property? I mean, that's, that's a situation that could be completely uh, uh, ugly and uh, ugly in a way, a form of abuse, because it would be perceived that the first selectman or the board of selectmen is leaning on a property order in order to gain an advantage in property purchase negotiation. So it's by design that I'm very cautious about enforcement issues in town, and really want to let the enforcement officers do the job that they're charged with doing without influence from this board, because it could really come back in a, in a negative way. I just wanted to make sure people are aware of that that concern. Uh, I have no, nothing further. I entertain motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. <coughs> discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Public input. Before we begin public, public input, I just want to say one thing. A lot of things that happen tonight, but if you're going to do public input, please do it in a nice, cordial manner. There's no reason to attack anybody that's up here. Do it nicely. Be civil. And okay. Oh, come on. Okay, and as you know, it's uh, limited to three minutes. Uh, is there any public input? Yes, Ms. Carter Um, I'm not sure if I got the answer. I don't know if you can provide the answer. But when you talked about taking vehicles home for public or for whatever, did, they, did you say that 1099s were issued as a fringe benefit for those? Because... Oops. Commuting home is a taxable thing. Yeah, um, we talked about tax implications, but I don't know exactly what the tax implications are. Okay. I know it's it's come up in the past, so uh, we'll I'll review those in, with uh, Mandy, and if it's something that I think needs to be incorporated in the policy, I'll put that in the draft. Okay. And I just want to make a comment about the ethics thing. Working for the government, we were given policies. We were given booklets, we were given everything, and we had to read it, we were responsible for reading it and signing for it. And it, just like you said, nobody would steal from a town, you would think no one would steal from IRS, but you're wrong! Okay. <laughs> um, I understand. I, I think as a, but it's, just to, to me, it's not, town, it's, it's not for lack of knowing they shouldn't, it's because they're going to do it anyway. Right. But, but I think it's a, it was a, it's a good way to protect the town in that when you are handing these pamphlets out to these people, they're signing them, they're signing them that they understand them, and it, it could be a grounds for dismissal. And it's in writing, because people will abuse that, and they will say, I was never told I could get fired. I never, it. I never yeah. so it's, it's a double-edged sword. I understand both sides. I um, don't disagree with you. I, I think it's more of a gut reaction on my part is, why should we have to? But well, I your point is very well taken. People are who they are. Yeah.
They're sensible people. And then um, I do agree with the leasing of the vehicle. I don't understand how that car that was used at the time could become so, I mean, wasn't it being maintained? Who was supposed to maintain these vehicles? Why is it not on a regular location? So we're not ending up where, I don't know. So that was my thought, but that's all I have. So we need Thank three you. more votes on the Board of Finance. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, is there any other public input? Mr. Bracken? Yeah, I was talking about the car when you uh, interrupted me at the last public input. You shut me off. And the thing is, is that with, I brought up the issue of the DWI, driving the town vehicle while under the influence. And you made a comment and you joked again about why should you have to have it in a policy or why should you have to tell somebody. And the thing is, is it's the law. And just as Laurie just pointed out, it protects the town. And I've brought it to you every single year over the last couple of years, and you keep laughing about it, and I've had it with your laugh. So tomorrow... Well, Mike, well, Mike, it's in the policy now about the DUI and drugs. It, it's okay. not in the policy. Well, it is in the policy that I just read. It's well, part of the policy. There's nothing right? in there saying that if you get caught operating a town vehicle that you have some type of pol uh, penalty that's going to come after you, that you're going to lose your job or anything like that. And with all the accidents that are occurring with people operating town vehicles or municipal or state vehicles, we should have something to protect the people. The other thing, I'm going to tell you why the state is looking for the town to take over the maintenance. Because I was at the hearing downstairs in the big room when all of you people spoke about it. And you and Denise Balboni were going back and forth and you told everybody because you would let the, the letter sit for six months and a girl caught it and you bawled her out on, the, on uh, the internet and social media because she pointed out the fact after people uh, were making big comments about all the lights coming out, and she turned around and she says, well, look at the date on the letter. And the letter was dated six months before you brought it to everybody's attention. But you and Denise were talking about what was going to happen with the light. And you said that there were a couple options, that the light could come out, the town could purchase the light, or you said that the town had made you an offer that they would replace the light if the town paid $15,000 and that the town took over the maintenance of the light after the light was replaced. That's correct. And you and Denise turned around at that meeting and you said that's the way to go. And Absolutely the third not. commissioner, I, tell, it's my, I have the floor. Remember, that's floor. how you saw it. And you and Denise turned around and said, that's the way to go. And the third selectman that was there didn't agree with you. And, I, and you went on and you told us that all of the other towns around that had had the lights that were marked for being taken away, all of them appealed the state's decision to remove the lights. And they won. You brought that to our attention. And I said to you, before you go and you buy the light, I said, appeal it. I said, if you turn around and you lose, you still have the option of buying it, and nobody did anything. So here we are, that's got to be a year and a half, two years ago, you've done nothing, what do you expect the town to, or the state to do? They probably figured out that you decided that that's what you were going to do, is buy the light and take over the maintenance, because that's the impression you left with everybody from that meeting. Thank you. So you're absolutely wrong. Absolutely. Okay. Listen to the audio. For now that I meeting. have the floor. You got it. And don't scream at we me. We did not agree to purchase the light. In fact, we agreed to do the opposite, not to purchase the light, and that we would appeal. Now, you just said we did nothing. I did appeal the decision. And I went down, appealed the decision, and said we are not going to purchase the light. We are not going to accept your offer. And that's the last we heard of it until the light started being installed in town. So that's it's just... You just can't make stuff up, Mike. That's you not what was discussed up. at the meeting, Chris. All you've got to do is listen to the audio tape because the audio tapes don't lie. But Chris Kervick, uh -uh. Michael, uh, Michael. Uh, Michael. Michael. Okay. So, is there any other public input? Yes. Mr. Costello, would you describe um, the travel lodge incident, the latest one? Um, I mean, it's, it's happened every month. Um, this one was just the biggest, but they have been very dialed, they've been very disruptive. 
I know you mentioned, he said at the meeting, um, they wouldn't have another one by that promoter or whatever. They've had them from other people every month. Um, do we know, did they have a liquor license? I keep, I keep hearing conflicting things. Also, a noise ordinance, we don't have one. Can we see about getting something? So, you know, at least we have something to fall back on. Um, other towns have them. I, mean, I looked some up, and they're usually like 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. Um, and uh, do you know when you're going to get a report? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I, I have, obviously, I'd like to get it as soon as possible because I'm just as curious as all of you are. So as soon as I get something, I'll, I'll, I'll publicize it, and it'll be reviewed by uh, this uh, board. As to the Noid ordinance, uh, I would suggest that you ask that that matter be brought to uh, put on the agenda of the police commission, because it is the police commission that opposed adopting the Noid ordinance and the last time it came up. I'm more than happy to do it in the first draft of the blight ordinance. Well, at that time, it was, it was a nuisance ordinance that included blight mm -hmm. and noise of subsets. It was in there, and at the request of the police commission, it was pulled out so that we could advance. So I would start there. I'm not trying to pass the buck, but I'd rather have their blessing to, to, to go forward on that because they're the ones, and they're, or the, the people that they supervise are the ones charged with enforcement, and that was their concern, is that they're not going to be properly enforced. Um, so that's where I would start on that. I hope to get the report as soon as possible. I was hopeful that we'd have it tonight, but um, we haven't. You push three out of four, we haven't heard. Push, push a little bit. Well, I will. Yeah, I will. Yeah. So, do I just email? How do I get it on the agenda? Oh, I would. E I would contact uh, Andrew Coolis, who's the chairman, mm -hmm. and send him a letter and ask that you would like the issue of a noise ordinance to be placed on the agenda. At an upcoming meeting. Do they have public input at the police commission? They do. So you can go to the police commission, I guess, and, and do They have one, but they have public I input just like you're doing now. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's one way to go and ask for it to be put on the agenda, mm -hmm. you know, that you're concerned and would like to have a discussion. But unlike the Board of Selectmen, who every now and then has the kindness to respond to a public input, the police commission almost universally does not respond to any public input at that time. Mm -hmm. Ever. Is there any other public input? Oh, Kitty, oh, you've got lots of it. Uh, yes. Diane, Diane Wisniewski, 52 Woodridge Drive. Um, with the meeting that you had last week concerning Travel Lodge, did the manager of the facility or the representative that was there commit to having police officers present, uh, paid police officers, as the last event on January yeah. 14th? Will uh, they well, he said he's not going to have these events anymore. With you the know, prior promoter. Yeah, with, well, I think that's what the limitation was with that Correct. promoter. Um, they did hire those police officers, the primary duty officers, but they didn't do it out of the kindness of their heart. The police happened to visit them the day before and said, we think you need to have a police presence. So they did hire several officers at that time. Um, so they did not specifically indicate whether they would have police officers again, because the implication was that they're not going to have an event like this again, but I'm not ready to just sort of take them at their word. Given that they're going to be responding to you in the next seven to ten days, would that be a reasonable time well, frame? They're not going to be responding. Our, my enforcement the enforcement, is correct. Responding. Is the enforcement stamp, do you see that as being feasible in the next seven um, to ten business days? Yeah, I, I don't know the law is regarding prior restraint. Can we say you shall not have this type of event, or can we only say if you have this type of event, you have to follow this, 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 you know, rule? I don't know the answer to that. So I'm not sure if we could just ban it. I don't know. Um, no, I was referring to the people doing the investigation, the various oh, agencies. To report back. Are they, when are they going to report back? I mean, how much is there to investigate? A I, lot. I guess. A lot. I, I, I realize that there's, 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 at least each of them probably have five to ten different areas of enforcement that they're, that may be coming into play here. This was not just a mild, it seems to me that there was many different things, including liquor licenses or lack thereof, catering licenses, food licenses, parking issues. There's a lot to do, which in terms of overall enforceability, I suppose that's a good thing. You, you know, there'll be uh, more, uh, more tools in the toolbox. 
uh, but there's a lot of work to do. So yeah. it should be a substantial report. I'm expecting so. so. Okay. Especially the health department. They yeah. really are. I don't know. They have a lot of. Uh, okay. our, the health director is Patrice Sulik. Is the health director? And it's North Central. Who's, uh, we we are one of their clients. Mm -hmm. They serve. The, she's outstanding and she's very thorough and very bright. So okay. I'm expecting that uh, there'll be a really detailed report from her. Great. Thank you. Kitty to Marlo, 18 Woodbridge Drive. We heard a very good presentation tonight from the guy that was talking about the safety complex and the EMT building and what we have now and what we need. I just have to say I think it's a darn shame we just lost, uh, what, four plus acres of land that would have been free and maybe possible to be used for those complexes. Oh, that's, that's not, that's not, that's not a done deal. The Ron Carey, I thought it was pulled. Uh, there, were, there were no representatives of the Roncari family here today speaking for them. Okay, so that's still viable land maybe for Well, that's a discussion that has to take place, but I certainly wouldn't, uh, okay, I wouldn't dismiss that, that would at this time. Shame. All right, one more thing. Paul brought up or mentioned having this open town input meeting for the senior center. Awesome, awesome idea. I wish we could have those more once a month give the people in this town a chance to speak their mind without the three minute limit um, and expect some answers. I think it's a great idea and I hope we can do more going forward. Thank you. Is there any other public input? Mr. Russo. Mr. Russo, 407 Elmwood Drive. Uh, I'm going to begin with the old business of the public safety building report upgrade. Are there any spare copies? Uh, that I might have. Of which if one? The, I'm sorry. The public. I, thanks for playing on your okay. computer. Uh, I was timing you. Okay. All right. Whatever. I want to know if there's any extra reports on the upgrade. I'd like one. I'd also like the Board of Selectmen to put it up on, well, maybe put it up on Windsor Locks moving forward. Maybe you could publish it there, Chris. Okay. Uh, that's all I have for that. Um, Bill, can I answer that? We, sure. We, we gave a copy to the assistant town clerk, so all three books will be at the town clerk's office either first tonight or first thing in the morning. They'll go in there tonight. Oh. They're, in, they're there for public inspection. So they'll be there tomorrow. The office only. They cannot leave the office. Oh, I'll just do an FOI request. Thank you. Well, you don't even need to. They're there, Bill. You know I you want my own. I want my own. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's fine. I want my you. own. Uh, other thing, Chris, I'd like to thank you for the courtesy of allowing me to speak when the representative was here because my question was he said that we were going to do a 20-year projection. My question to you and the rest of the board, we have 7.5 square miles, a lot of it's airport. I think the population, town of Windsor Locks, has stayed pretty much the same. Where do the statistics come from to justify what he's claiming? Our, our public safety needs, and I would have liked to have him answer the question. So that's why I need that report, because I need to look at it. Are we going to annex Suffield? Are we Are going to annex Windsor to justify? Well, I mean, hey, I don't know, it dumped up to about 20,000 square feet? I don't know. I think we're going to have, how are we going to expand the town of Windsor Locks? We have to annex property from other towns. And you know, the last thing there where you were talking about uh, the OPM, well, I uh, brought it to the attention before that we should maybe consider regionalizing dispatch. Regionalizing dispatch. That would save us, the town of Winslox, a lot of money. And maybe we should consider regionalizing police services as a cost saving. Um, Senior Center, litter. Oh, uh, on your ethics policy, and I, I'd encourage you both to look. I believe that the policy says an ethics hearing will be discretional. That needs to come out. I filed an ethics complaint, and if you'd like me to produce your email, it says your, your ethics complaint is not going to be granted, I'll do that. I'll put it up on my Facebook site. Sure. Thank you. Is there any other public input? All the way back, Lucinda. Yes, Ms. Van Giesen. Lucinda Van Giesen, 70 Grove Street. So we're coming into budget time, and it's very confusing, at least for me. So 
I'm hoping that at some point, and, and this is just a thought and a suggestion, one of the things that I struggle with as I go to different meetings is I feel like we don't have a macro view. So some, uh, Noden Reef is an example, the house. Park and Rec pays for the utilities. How come? Nobody knows. So I, I'm just thinking out loud here. We have all these town buildings, so, and, and I get that, and, and I'm not arguing or for or against, but we're talking about a senior center. We're talking about a new safety complex. We have four schools in town that are underutilized. Specifically, I'm talking about the high school. So I just want to throw that out. Is it maybe, is there, as long as we're hiring professionals for one small thing, it seems like we're always chopping stuff up, probably because we don't have all the money that we need. So take town hall. We do a micro moving offices, and then we discover that the heating vent we needed for whoever is in somebody else's office. So I just want to ask again that maybe we look macro and say, how many buildings belong to the town? What can we do? Just a thought.